Guys, what I wanted to do in this video is actually take some time and talk about something that many of us find ourselves doing more and more often, and that is replacing the older N2 devices with a newer device. Now, you, many of you guys know that back in, I believe it was around 2013, Johnson Controls ended the manufacture of uh, N2 specific devices. And since that time, there has been a few revisions to some of the hardware and software uh, to try to make a, a way to be able to work with those systems. Uh, N2 is still out there. There's still a lot of systems running N2. And the newer devices do have the capability of uh, communicating on those N2 trunks but there must be some proper configuration done uh, when you set them up and i've talked about this before in another video that i did on my channel back several years ago but i thought it was time to do a little bit of an update now what we have in front of me here is a uh, program this is a vma program for a cvm uh, this is one that we have had to replace recently and this is the perfect example of some of the stuff that you can run into when you are working with a device. Now, one of the things that you need to make sure of when you go through and set up your programming, and we're going to go here underneath the system select because there's very critical that you take, uh, make sure that you do this one step. This right here is your N2 compatibility mode. You need to make sure when you go through your selection tree, whether you're writing a program for a VMA to replace a VMA or whether you're trying to replace an old UNT or, or DX or anything that you're trying to put on an N2 trunk. You need to make sure that you select this option and then select the type of device that you are going to be adding. Uh, in this instance, it was replacing a VMA 1400 series controller. Okay, so you need to make sure that you do that. Now, once you get into the program and get everything set up the way that you need to, before you attempt to do a download, there's another step that you need to take as well. And underneath the define hardware, if you go over to the into mapping, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this one here in just a moment. But first of all, I wanted to show you what this is. This basically is how that the system is going to interpret the points from the newer device to the N2 trunk. Now, you will not be able to do pass-through to the new device on an N2 trunk once you uh, load it onto that trunk. You will have to plug directly into that device to make any kind of modifications and changes and things like that. Now, notice very carefully here some of the points names, the point address, and things like that, because all of that is going to play into how you pull these devices in. You can see here we do have our occupancy mode, we have our occupancy status, schedule, we have our zone temps, and of course along the top here, you have various different tabs that can help you sort through some of this a little easier. Like this right here is going to filter it down to just the analog inputs for this system. Of course, then we have analog outputs, which of course is just being a VAV. It has just the heating output on it and so on. You do not get this when you first open the program and you first open this panel. In fact, I'm going to remove this here just to show you what you do see. Okay, now this is what you see. You see basically a blank screen with the option to create a PRN file. The PRN file that you will create is what's going to be added as a resource file to that device once you pull it in. I'm just going to select create here and notice something. You see these two points here? They are now showing red and that is because it needs a point address for these. Okay, This is something that you've got to pay close attention to because if you do not do this right and you don't get all of these red arrows, these red markers taken care of, it is not going to work right in your system. 
Okay, so do not forget to change that. Now, what is some of this information here? The point address and all that. I'm going to jump over into SCT for a moment and show you something. What I have here, I have got two boxes pulled up. And, of course, one of them is an N2 device, an N2 specific device. And the other one is a newer device that has been added to an N2 trunk. You will notice through here the AIs, the AOs, and things like that, the ADF. This is all of the information that is pulled from those points that we have exposed on the system. You can see here on this one as well, it is sort of the same thing. However, one thing that you're also going to notice is some of these values are going to be op opposite of what you may think. Okay, You can uh, get very close. In fact, I have had some devices to where I've been able to match all of these variables up to where that device would come online much easier. Now, depending on your system, you may or may not be able to get all of those points to pull back in. In fact, on many of the systems that we've had to do, uh, we have had to pull points in either manually or through using the PRN file. Okay, so pay very close attention to that. But for example here, like the supply flow, it is ADF58 on the newer device. Now when I look over to the older device, of course it is ADF58 as well. So that should pull in, but there are some additional things that we are going to need to look at. Now you can go through here if you have a good SCT backup and you can match these points to the original and there again where we will be matching those values is right in here on this points address list. That's where you want to do that. Okay, You want to go down through here and just like we saw just a moment ago uh, we go down to the supply flow and there we have ADF 58. Okay, If you are able to match that it's going to make it much easier for you to pull all of these points in. However, this is not the only thing that you've got to pay attention to. There is another thing that you need to pay attention to as well. So we're going to jump back in SCT and we are going to look at a hardware point some, or some additional hardware information on these two devices. I want you to notice how that we have VND on this one and VMA on this one. And the reason for that is because this one here, of course the one that is pulled into this screen now, was a newer device. That controller type says VND and the this original controller over here and then again guys this is two separate controllers. This is different from what we were looking at before as far as them being swapped and that sort of thing so don't let that confuse you. But what we have is the controller type over here is still VAV and or VMA this one here is VND. Okay, now where does that come from? We're going to jump back into our SCT or our CCT, sorry, and I want you to pay attention to this tab right here. Okay, do you see what it says here? Device type. We have VND, we have VAV, we have UNT, we have AHU, and things like that. One thing that you want to try to do if you can is you want to match what you currently have and it needs to match exactly. If it is labeled VAV in your system, make it match VAV here with that new box. If you cannot get it to do that, I'm going to show you a trick that can help you get your device online a little bit faster. Okay, Once you go in here, for example, this one here says VMA, but when I look back over on my system into my uh, CCT, Okay, I have VAV. I do not have VMA. So this is where what you can do is you can go in here to this. You can change that to VND or VAV just depending on what you want to do. And then go back into SCT. After you have created your PRN file, after you have corrected all of these red flags within your system, then go back into your SCT then you're going to change this to match. Okay, You can see here when I drop this down, I have VMA, I have VND, or whatever. Make this match what you have in 
your CCT program. Now, before you do any of this, guys, I strongly recommend that you back up the device, back up the engine to SCT. That way you have a fresh copy of everything that is there. In fact, make an extra backup if you need to. Once you make that change and have these to match, okay, you match it here in SCT and you match it in CCT. You know, you go by what you have selected here in CCT. Get all of these point address issues corrected and then go back into your SCT, make it match what is it, what it is in CCT. And then after you do that, download that engine. Okay, that is going to get several of your points back online for you. Okay, that will make part of your process a lot easier. If you have this mismatched, if you have it as a VAV or something else, when SCT is looking for VMA or VND, then what is going to happen, your device is not going to come back online. It's going to just stay red x on your system. Okay, so what you would have to do, and you can do this, and I have had to do this before, uh, you delete out the old device, and then you can go in and basically discover the new device. And then you will add the resource file, your, that PRN file, as the resource. And you can see here on this device, we have a resource file added for this particular device and that resource file is what you generate here within your CCT. Of course right here is where you would do that you know create the PRN file. You would create that file save it somewhere on your computer and then add that as a resource to that particular VMA that whatever device that you have added back in. And then once you do that you will be able to go in and auto discover your points and things like that but we're still not finished. There are still some other things that we need to talk about. One of the things that you will notice when you do pull these points in, there are still going to be some points that are not going to properly pull in, even with that PRN file. A big one on these boxes is the occupancy schedule. I'm going to click on this box here and bring up that occupancy schedule point and then I'm going to go up to this other one and I'm going to grab the occupancy schedule point on it as well. Okay, this one here is labeled a little bit differently. And so I'm going to get this and I'm going to pull it over into this window. Okay, this right here, if you try to pull it in from the PRN file, is not going to come in correctly. It is going to come in basically as a numeric value. That is how that PRN file tends to bring these things in. So what you need to do is then try to modify that slightly. Okay, I'm going to close this back out. I don't want to save. I'm just going to basically reopen this file. And that way I don't have to worry about my uh, points that I had open just a moment ago being red flagged. I don't have to worry about that. They're going to go back to the way that they were. Okay, when I get in here and I open my define hardware and I go back to my N2 mapping, the points here, the occupancy command, the way that it will pull in, uh, there again, it will pull in as a multi-state point. It's just as a numeric value. I uh, don't really have any way of doing it easily to show this to you, but just trust me guys, take my word for it and you will understand when you ever have to go and work with one of these. That value is going to come in, the occupancy schedule, the occupancy command, it's going to come in as a numeric point. We don't necessarily want it to be a numeric value in our system. So what we will do, and what I typically do, is I will basically either blow that point back out and then pull it in manually. Okay. When I click into the hardware, you can see here it is ADI. That is an AD or an ADI input. Okay, that's a data input. When the system, when you first go to pull it in, when you're connected into your engine, uh, what you can do is when you discover it, you add it manually. You can remember what you want, what you have here. You will select as a mode of operation when you get to that first value uh, you will select uh, you know mode of operation and then you will go in to your next screen and it will give you this okay I don't believe it's gonna let me try to do that here let's just see if I can uh, do something to help you understand a little bit 
That way, if I click on the insert field point, I'm just going to try to walk you through some of this and show you a little more about what I'm talking about. This screen here, okay, I have mode of operation, I have analog input, I have binary input, and all that kind of thing. From this screen here, what I want is that mode of operation, that MO. This is going to sound a bit confusing at first, but once you get to the point of fooling with this more, you're going to understand it much better. I'm going to hit next, and then right here, it's going to bring you to this screen. And this is where you're going to select the point type. Of course, it would be an ADI, and then, of course, then go down to that 165. Whatever that value there is, is what you're going to select. Now, it may not be 165. It's really going to depend on your new box, what that is in your new box. For example, if I go back into my program here, you can see this one, the occupancy schedule, uh, which is what is the point that I would be getting for this box. It is a 78. So what you would want to pull in is that ADI 78. And that is what you will add in to this trunk, okay? And you can do this in SCT. You can get all of this set up in SCT, get all of those points corrected, get all of those uh, IDs corrected the way that they need to be, and then download that engine to where you can get that back online a little smoother. It just depends on what you're doing, what you're trying to do in your application, and all that kind of stuff. I've done it both ways. Okay, but these are just a few of the steps that you will need to follow. So we're just going to cancel out of this because I don't need to do that now. But that is some of the basic steps that you can use for getting these devices back on. Okay, just remember that, guys. You've got to make sure that you select that into compatibility mode when you are setting up your programming. And then you need to go through that list, work your way through that list, correct all of those points, and so on. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do to try to give you guys a little bit better understanding of what is necessary for putting a newer device on an N2 trunk. I know that that's something, as I mentioned earlier, that we all are running into more and more often. But guys, hope this is helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. I would appreciate it if you would share this video. I would also appreciate it if you would go down to the description below, check out some of the links, anything just by you going through uh, to Amazon. Uh, anything you buy kind of helps to support what we do here. Those are affiliate links and full disclosure. But guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Visit my website at systemcontroltech.net. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Be sure to share the video, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Ring the notification bell, and we'll see you next time.